for Studio Central. Um, I recognize quite a few of you at this point. <laughs> um, so uh, my name is Alita and uh, I work at the library, obviously, and I'm an artist. And then Danielle is my colleague um, from the library and she is running the Zoom. And um, we're here to answer your questions and all that. And um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions at any point. Um, and then we'll, we always save some time at the end to show work if uh, people want to. So um, today we are doing pastels. Uh, did everybody get some version of pastels? Yeah, cool. Okay, so um, I specifically said soft pastels because they are so like luscious and full of pigment and um, easy to use and incredibly messy. <laughs> but um, you could use those. You could use, um, so these are like handmade, uh, like half sticks. And then they can also come in smaller versions um, and they come in soft and hard. You can use whatever you want. I like soft because um, you can really do a lot of beautiful blending with it. And then um, if you have oil pastels, that's okay too. Uh, I wouldn't mix the two. I wouldn't mix uh, soft pastels with oil, but any of those are fine. And then you're, you'll probably want to have a pencil. And um, if you still have a kneaded eraser, that's a nice thing to have. You don't have to, but it's a really nice way to pick up pigment off your page. Um, you know, you can use it for blending. And um, I, I think I said you could have some optional things like um, a chamois cloth for blending, uh, like a blending stump. Um, you can even use something like a pastel brush. But the great thing about pastels is all you really, really need is your hands and the pastels themselves and some paper. So um, I will mostly just be using my finger to blend the uh, all the pigment and probably using my kneaded eraser some. So um, did you all get those patterns? Okay, so I have mine taped up to the wall and you can um, you know put them on your browser as usual. And I chose those because I thought they were beautiful, but also I, I thought that doing an abstract drawing um, when you're learning pastels is a really good way to get to know the material um, without having to draw, you know, dive right into some realistic drawing. And um, it's a good way to be expressive and, uh, you know, spontaneous and all the things you want to do when you're first learning a material or when you are an expert at it. Um, so I'm going to just show you a couple of the books. So this is a Charles Dickens book I got from the Central Fiction Stacks from the 1880s. And inside of the end paper is one of the patterns that we're using. And it kind of looks like a pastel drawing. So I thought this was a really nice one. And then this poetry book from the 1920s has this beautiful cloth patterned cover that I thought we could use. And um, the other two were in books that are so old that you can't actually take them home with you. <laughs> so I left them at work. Um, I think that is it. Let's do what we usually do and um, just do a little messing around with our pastels just to get a feel for them real quick before we get started on an actual abstract drawing. So I'm gonna move my camera and you'll have to make sure to let me know that you can see what I'm doing. Danielle, does that look good? It looks good on my end. Okay. All right, so everybody just grab some pastel, any color you want. 
and let's, um, you know, try out like a big spontaneous swoop with the side of it and see what happens. And if you just did that with me, you probably have a ton of pastel dust sitting on the top of your page. Just blow it off. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's okay in your house to have a little dust. Um, pastels are in general, totally non-toxic. Uh, if you have any cadmium colors, um, those would be the ones that uh, would not, would have some, I think is, I'm not sure, maybe it's lead or well, cadmium, but um, mostly they're all fine. And um, if you're just doing it today, you don't need to worry about it. So grab another and try using an edge and see what you get. Okay, so nice for details, line work, etc. And then let's try um, to see what happens when you start blending colors. So I'm going to take this kind of rusty color and put it next to my blue that I already laid down. And I'm going to start blending those two together. And it's generally best to blend from light to dark. So I'm just going to come in here and start blending these together. You can also use your chamois cloth. And you'll see that the pigment comes up really easily. It's different, um, I would say, than the charcoal we did before. You can also blend it into the line you have here. And then think about whether you like the really smoothed out look when you blend it, or if you like this textured look on your paper. If you have different kinds of pastels, you could try them out now. I think this is a, actually a hard pastel, so it's not going to leave as much pigment. I think the deal with hard pastels is they just have more binder in them than pigment. And so um, they're really good for detail work too. And if you have a, an area with color, I would try out picking up some pigment with an eraser if, if you have one. Um, you can do different things. I mean, you can literally draw with an eraser and pastel. So I'll just show you that. You, it comes up pretty easily. And, I, and I'm getting a line here by removing pigment. You can also do something like this, where I'm actually taking pigment from this rusty pigment from the bottom, and I've got it on my eraser, and I'm making a little pattern in my blue with it. So there's so much you can do with pastels, and that's what makes them so fun. And then say you have an area that you just hate, you can erase it. Um, pretty easily. I mean, you might have some faint pigment it's still there on the page, like the rusty color is not going to come up as easily, but you can definitely uh, do some erasing with, with your pastels. Um, the, you just have to be careful not to, to rip your page. But um, if you're using pastel paper, it's pretty hardy. It's got a nice tooth to it. And um, you should you should be fine if you are doing a lot of erasing. Um, another thing people like to do sometimes is use a brush. They do make specific um, pastel brushes 
but I don't use them. I just use old paint brushes because they're nice and firm. And um, you want kind of like a, a blunt edge and you can blend that way as well. And that's a really nice smooth uh, blending. Um, another thing you can do is, is try out different colors next to each other. If you have black and white, now's a good time to try them. So what happens if you, I'll just turn this over, take say a yellow triangle and give it an outline like we sometimes like to do, say like a black outline. Super high contrast, right? But another way people like to do outlines without it being so um, just intense is to use a complementary color. So the opposite on the color wheel. So that would be violet. And you still get a nice outline that pops, but your eye is uh, generally very pleased by the combination of complementary colors. And then you can draw on top of your pastel. So I've started drawing on top of this corner here. So I already have quite a bit of yellow down and I'm just coming in and drawing on top of it to give it some shading like that. So there's a ton you can do with it. You can layer, um, you can really lay it on thick like so. And then you can come back in. Some people even like to use um, tools to almost like scratch out or carve shapes or textures in there. Um, can't, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that very well, but that's another thing you can do. That's usually something you do at the end. And then I could come back in and go over this with a lighter color. See what happens. I'm getting kind of a gray, which is normal, but it's also really nice and um, textured and has highlights within the pigment. Um, so a lot of really beautiful stuff. All right, so hopefully you feel a little bit um, comfortable with your material now. Um, you might have hands like this at this point. I have a paper towel nearby to just wipe it off. So to do this abstract drawing, I think I'm gonna use this blue shaded paper. There are different ways to approach this. You could just pick one of the pages that I sent and do that because those are abstract patterns in themselves. Or you can combine them. You could do, um, with your pencil, you could draw like a line in the middle, like a horizon line, just lightly. And you could work one of the patterns up here and one down here and in the middle is where you could work to combine them and create some interesting effects. You could divide your page up even more. You could do like a grid and then let your patterns bleed into each other where they meet. And you could do um, really organic shapes like just um, 
like this. And then wherever there's a separate area, you can add pattern into it and then weave them in and out of each other until you are satisfied with it. The other thing you could do if you're confident um, in your intuition is just, just get to work, lay it down wherever you feel it. So what I'm gonna do for the, for the first bit is take, I don't know if you have up this pattern with the blue, um, almost like vine-like pattern in it, but underneath it, there are like almost like waves of, what look like waves of fabric, it's very subtle. And I think it's gonna, it's really nice to, to lay that down over the whole thing first. So if you wanna watch me do it and do it with me, that would be great. You can use whatever colors you want. I'm going to use, um, I think I will use sort of complementary colors. I'm gonna use blue and this peach color. <laughs> But you could do uh, violet and yellow. You could do like a pink and a green. And they are on a diagonal. So I am just going to, these, these lines I'm trying to capture are kind of on a diagonal. So I'm just going to, for now, give, some diagonal lines like this with the edge of my pastel all the way across. I can still see my pencil lines that are dividing up the page. And they don't all have to be, you know, uh, spaced apart exactly right. In fact, it's probably better if they're not more interesting. Um, and then I'm gonna come in with my peach, my lighter color, and I'm going to do the same thing in between. Okay. I'm gonna wipe off my hands a bit. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start blending. And I'm gonna just start by using my hand. So, this can take a minute for sure. You can do strokes like that. You can kind of go back and forth like this. And if you want to use your chamois cloth, this is a great time for that. And you're gonna do this until you have almost ripples on the page. And I would um, try to leave some of the bright pigment in the middle um, because those highlights are really gonna convince your eye that this page is just rippling. And if you don't leave them, you can come back in and do that later. So you're probably gonna get a little bit of a gray or brown in between each stripe. All right, hopefully you're getting there a little bit. I left this corner kind of undone. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, 
Everyone doing all right? Okay. Um, I think I forgot to show you one I did for practice for this class. So I'm going to show you now. Um, it's not that impressive, so don't make fun of me. But um, this is an example of all four patterns together. And this is one that I started with that diagonal ripple. And then I layered over it like this uh, almost like cross hatching pattern that's in one of them. And uh, the violet here is from the that that pink and black cover. So I kind of chose some of my own colors, which I encourage you to do. Um, but yeah, you can take this in many different directions. Another one I did was more was based on the the Dickens book that had the like orange, uh, almost pastel looking um, end papers. And I did this one with it. And so it's got the really smooth down look over the um, cross hatched pattern. And then as with all abstract paintings, you can do whatever you want. So I gave it my own personal squiggle at the bottom. So I definitely encourage you to use these patterns as a, um, you know, just an inspiration, but take this drawing wherever you want to take it. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm sorry, I keep bumping that. Um, I'm going to, because I can still see how I divided my page up, I'm going to start adding some pattern within my little divisions. So I think I really like this diamond one right there. It's got like, to me, it reminds me of cross hatching when you're drawing, but it's a bunch of diamond shapes. So I'm going to start with that one. So I'm going to want to use one that I know I can get a, a sort of precise edge with. So I think I will use one of my smaller pastels in a violet color. And I'm just going to come in here and uh, start giving it that pattern. And, I, and it's not too important to stay in your um, divisions here. They're more just like a, a guideline. So you're getting some horizontal lines, or I'm sorry, those are di diagonal lines. And then you are coming in over it. And the same thing over here. You can do as much of this as you want. And then I think I'm gonna um, add this somewhere else on my page because I think we've talked in, in this class before about trying to deal with the entire picture at, at the same time rather than finishing up a detailed part. Um, so I'm going to add this over here too. And I'm so interested to see what you guys do because this is just, um, you know, working abstractly is just, uh, it's challenging, first of all. But if you don't take it too seriously, it can be really fun and it can just go anywhere. Like the people do crazy, beautiful things with it. So, um, Okay, so I think I'm gonna do three of those. So I'm gonna do one. I have a division up here as well. The nice thing about this pattern is because of the nature of it, um, it's kind of like, looks like a woven fabric or something you can, uh, really use it uh, for both obscuring and revealing patterns that are near it. Um, another pattern could literally weave in and out of these lines. 
Okay, and so then you can add as much little detail as you want. They, there's these little diamonds in the middle here and here. And remember, all of this can be wiped away with your cloth or your hand if you don't like it. So, all right. I'm gonna move on to another color. How about, I'm gonna take a, another peach color, but a, 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 it, this is like a, I don't know, it's just a really intense color. Um, it's kind of a peach pink. And um, I am going to move on to this guy right here. And this is just um, a lot of laying down larger areas of color with the side of my um, charcoal. And then there's some kind of like veins here that I'll add in uh, too. So I have a little di divided area over here and I'm going to just I'm just going to copy the idea of this, not so much any particular area. So, and more up there. So, I'm really laying this on thick because I'm going over the top of some other colors. But it's nice, you can still see like some of the blue behind this bright peach color. And um, I'm going to extend this all the way down here, I think. I'm gonna let it move over the dividing line that gave it because I kind of intuitively feel that I should. All right, I think I'll add some more up here. And a little bit more over on this side. And I've already started um, budding into the space of this pattern. Um, I'm totally not uh, respecting its space. I'm just moving it, moving on into it. All right, so that's something I've got there. Um, now, I think I am going to start adding in this one. So this one you really um, have to look at because it's not really obvious what's going on there. So what I did when I made my practice drawings was I picked out the black area and did that first, the black lines and then came back in and did the pink lines. I used my own colors, but um, if you just decide, okay, I'm only looking at the black lines, it's a lot easier to decipher the pattern. So um, you have this like square shape with four dots and there's like almost little eyelashes on the sides here. Um, and you can do as much of that as you want. And then there are these curved like half circle shapes on either side. So um, as much of that as you want, or as little as you want, I'm gonna start adding it to mine now. And I think I will use, let's see, a smaller um, stick of chart or pastel. And I'm going to, let's see, do I want red? Mm. 
There's a nice green, well, this side. I think I will do green. And I have a divided area right here. So I'm just going to be brave and see what happens. And that's something that happens with pastels is they just break on the page and that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna make these little square shapes that look something like this. With the little dots in the middle. And before I go too far with this, I'm gonna add this somewhere else. So I'm working on the composition of the whole page all at once. So I'm going to make another um, like bracketed square shape somewhere else on the page with my green. And I think I'm gonna lay it almost on top of this purple shape. So we'll see. This is a very crumbly pastel. And like I said about uh, using shapes to obscure or reveal each other, I'm going to kind of put this square behind the purple lines. I can come back with my purple later and make that more obvious. All right. And I think I need more of that. So I'm going to come down here and fill this in. I'm not gonna have any of this green left by the time I'm done because it's crumbling in my hand as I use it. What that probably means is this is a pretty, this is a random pastel I found in my box of art supplies and it's probably a really good one because when they're super crumbly like this, they don't have much binder in them, which makes them fall apart more, but they're full of pigment. So, okay, let's see. I think I've been doing kind of like three and three, but I think I'm gonna do five squares instead of three. If I have enough of this left. And Daniel, can you keep in track of the time for me? <laughs> I have no idea. Sure thing. Uh, it's 11, 11.34 right now. Okay, we're good then. Thank you. All right. Okay, so that little square I let go off the page, just like these. So you should work with these patterns to make something that feels balanced to you on the page. If you, if your eye is telling you, you need another green square, just add it in. There's not really um, a wrong way to do this. Uh, there are definitely compositional concepts that we could talk about if we had a lot of time. But I think for an abstract drawing like this, it's totally okay and even um, good for your artistic uh, growth to just trust your eyes on it. Okay, so I think I need some bright yellow and I am going to do that by accenting um, these bright peach areas with some yellow. So I'm gonna come in over parts of it. So I'm, I'm almost like, well I am, like blending color on the page by drawing it, not by using a blending tool. So I'm just coming around and adding some yellow highlights. And now my eye is telling me 
now that I did that for some reason, my eye is telling me I need some over here. So I'm gonna come back with my peach and just give a little, oops, a little something there. Come back in with my yellow highlight. Um, another thing I should say is that you can have several of these drawings going on at once. I'm just doing one, but feel free to start another if you're not happy with what you're doing, or if you're super happy with what you're doing and you want to have a few of these drawings. Okay, so I'm going to come in um, with a brown, a dark well, this is almost like a, it's like a maroon or a dark purple brown. And um, I believe this is a hard pastel. We'll see when I use it. Um, and I'm going to work on this green square shape by adding in what I see from that pattern, which is um, It's kind of like parentheses around these little circles in the middle. I'm gonna grab my green again and give some little eyelashes on the side. So I'm just gonna start drawing this pattern out. I might have to switch colors because this green is slowly dying on me. So I'm moving all around the page and kind of adding the same elements so that it feels nice and balanced. And um, I'm going to just keep on with this pattern. And I'm just going to use brown from here on out because my green disappeared. So there's these kind of darker oval shapes. I'm going to do that over here. And you'll notice it's really easy to leave fingerprints. Um, and if you don't want them, go ahead and grab your eraser and pick them up. It's gonna pick up some of your pigment too, but that's all right. Okay. Now I am going to go out on a intuitive limb here and just add some things that I want to see that are not in the patterns. Um, so I'd like to see um, some shading around this pattern and I'm using a really um, light green. So I'm just going to follow the shape like so. And just kind of let it get uh, all um, kind of feathery. I'm going to do that to all of these. And by now my patterns are overlapping, blending, and it's getting harder and harder to tell what is what. And that's when it's up to you to decide how much of the patterns you want to preserve. So I want to see more of this crisscross shape. Um, so I'm gonna take my 
purple again and come in here and really go over some of these lines because I really like that one. And I'm going to sometimes go over other patterns and sometimes go underneath them. And um, well, I better finish, I have these over here. I should not neglect. Um, and now I wanna see my background, that very first thing that I did. I wanna see that pop a little more because I really like it. Um, so that was uh, this blue and I'm gonna come in and give it some more pigment in the areas that I see it. And that means finding it underneath other patterns sometimes and in between. And I kind of like the um, look right now of just uh, the strokes the drawing um, strokes on the page without blending that but maybe you want to blend it and then uh, I had a really light orange that I'm I might actually add and then blend I'm not sure I want to see the strokes of this as much but I do want to see the the color so I'm going to use my blending stump for this. Um, so, you know, one thing that happens, especially when you've not done much of this, but definitely, even if you have, is that things can turn gray fast. So, um, don't despair when that happens. It's normal. And you can always come back in with another, um, with your color and lay the bright pigment back down and get rid of that gray. So. So I'm, I am giving it a little bit of a wispy feel with this tool. And um, now the thing that I see that I'm not loving are these huge orange patches. But I don't want them to disappear completely, but I just want them to be a little more interesting. So I'm going to just give them um, some of that vine pattern. And I'm going to use this bright purple and I'm going to come in and just give it some of what I see there. Of the vine pattern. Now I'm just following the idea of the pattern. I'm looking at it, but I'm not drawing any specific area of it. And you can do it however you are comfortable with. I'm gonna do it up here. I'm so excited to see what you guys have done. Maybe a little over here. So, I mean, this is a an hour long and we didn't, we won't even get a full hour uh, pastel drawing. It's pretty, pretty dang quick. Um, 
you can spend hours and hours on these things. Um, but they do lend themselves to quick drying as well. So um, that's why I'm working super fast. But uh, if I was just doing this by myself, I would probably spend a lot longer on it. Okay, and another thing you can always do is start moving your paper around. Because sometimes you don't, you're like, ugh, that's not doing it for me. And then you move it like this, you just turn it and I mean, it totally is. And I, this is just a thing with abstraction that um, sometimes you've created a perfect composition. You just don't know it until you turn your paper around. So I actually prefer mine like this. And I think because we're human, we can't help but start to see things in it. So um, though it was totally not intentional, I see like birds flying here. So maybe you see something like that in yours as well. Any questions at this late stage in the game? Doesn't look like it, okay. <laughs> uh, Danielle, what time is it? It is 11.48. Okay, so I think I should wrap it up so that we can show some work. I'm going to just give mine one more look and see if there's anything I must add. And I kind of think there is. Now I could do this two ways. I could use my eraser and do some reductive drawing, uh, which is removing the pigment to get some highlights. Or I could take a white or light colored pastel and just add in some highlights. <clears throat> um, and I think I'm going to follow this grid pattern here um, with, with the white to get some highlights. So I'll just kind of follow along a few of its lines. Um, it's kind of like we have a light source. We talked about that, I think, with the watercolors. And so I'm just giving little, little dashes, basically. Um, I don't use black um, very often. Uh, generally, if I want a dark tone, I will just use um, a color. Uh, or you can do something like blend together like a, um, a brown and a blue. Uh, and that will make a, a dark shadow um, tone, but it's not black because the black pigment often overwhelms. Um, everything else, unless you purposely want like a, a very outlined form. So I think I'm going to add a little more of this white. Let's see. Maybe I will uh, break this super easy to break. And then I have just like a round um, shape I can use almost like a stamp. Of course, it's going to break a little, but if you kind of wiggle it on the page, like that, then I'm getting this nice round shape and doing it around uh, the whole composition. And then my abstract painting is suddenly a drawing of birds flying in the snow, <laughs> I'm realizing. And if you want to lighten the color up, um, but not see white exactly, you can always use the white. And I'm just gonna show you this, it may or may not work for my drawing, but say I think that blue there is just way too bright. I can come in with my white over the top of it, do a little blending. And now instead of a bright blue, I have, um, just given it uh, a subtler feeling. And I've also blended it in and now it's smooth instead of rough. So you may find, oh, I did that there, but now I, my eye is telling me I need to do it here too. Um, so that's what I mean when I say you can work on these forever. Mm. 
Okay, so I am going to stop there, even though I'm not totally satisfied with it. My eye just told me I've got to have more blue up there. Okay, um, so I'm stopping here. And what I would do um, now, if I felt like this was my masterpiece and I wanted to keep it forever and ever, uh, I would take it outside with some fixative and give it a few layers of fixative. It's, I think you hold it about 12 inches away and give it a few layers. Um, but that is the only way you are going to get uh, pastels to stay on the page because they just, even with, even if you're using watercolor paper and it's, so it's really textured, the, um, the, the pastel pigment is just not going to stick. It's even worse than charcoal um, in that regard. So um, I hope that you enjoyed that and learned a little bit about what pastels are all about. In the future, we could do this again, but actually try to draw a real thing um, because you will have, you have learned about this material some. So does anybody want to share? <laughs> and if you do, unmute yourself. <laughs> Please. All right, Janet, I see yours. Oh, cool. Look at that. So you split your page up, Janet, into four. Mm -hmm. And then, and what kind of pastels are you using? Uh, most of these are some blick. So mm -hmm. they're semi, you know, they, they're firm, but they're not as hard as new pastel. Yeah, that is beautiful. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Um, okay, who do I have a picket? Okay. Yes. Oh, cool. So you did just one and you did the end paper that is. Yeah. The Dickens. The original book. But I've started another because I want to try each one of the end papers mm -hmm. and use this. I want to use a blender, a narrow blender. This was all finger work. Oh, perfect. And I want to try narrow lines. So that's yeah. what I. That's great. That it's, I, I, you, I mean, it looks exactly like uh, that. The first one you showed looks exactly like the uh, end paper. Good job. So Similar, but thank you. Yeah, it, it's been fun. Yeah, it's fun. Good. Uh, Heidi, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Nice. So I see the, the ripples we made. Right. And then you really went with the, um, the vine work. Organic. Yeah. It's, it's kind of underwater, but in like fiery tones. <laughs> That is cool. All right, Belinda. Ooh, look at that. That's amazing. Um, I like that you you stuck to like three, maybe three colors. Um, no, there's probably like six. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I guess what I'm what I'm really seeing is the contrast between that like hot pink and the green blue. Yeah, there's probably a couple different color pinks and a um, couple different purples and a really dark blue. Yeah. So. Um, I the composition is really nice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you must have really um, trusted yourself to just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just go with it. <laughs> good, very good. Okay, Jan, oh, look, look at, at that. that. This is my attempt at the patterns. Yeah, it's so uh, um, detailed. Yeah, and, but then I also did a marble one because I really love that marble look. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's like beautiful. That nice blend. colors. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for this. I, I was afraid of pastels, so now I'm... <laughs> it's yeah. messy. Yeah. Fear, fear no art. <laughs> um, anyone else? Uh, I'm still afraid of pastels. <laughs> okay, who... Okay, I have... 
I like that. <laughs> I have Heidi and Diane. So Heidi, I'm going to start with you and then Diane. This is okay. Heidi's husband, Curtis. Hi, Curtis. Let's Hi. go. <laughs> it's like Curtis's. <laughs> that is awesome. It's very um, geometric. Uh-huh. Um, was that so like you you really did the ripples nicely in the back and then you just like all this really intense line work on top yeah i, I was just basically following following you uh and using the colors that i had and really i've never had any experience with this pastel before so but i really enjoyed the experience and look forward to experimenting more oh good i'm so glad to hear it <laughs> you uh you have a bright future in pastels, I think. Thanks. <laughs> okay, Diane, did you want to show okay. yours? So I pretty much followed what you said to do. <laughs> cool. So you went all over the page. It looks like you yeah. started with the ripples. Because yeah. I've never worked with them, so I thought I'd better just follow paint by number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how did you enjoy working with them? Very much. It was a lot easier than I thought. But right. I have these really cheap things from uh, Hobby Lobby, and um, I think I'll have to expand to get a little bit better quality. But they're well, fine. Uh, the cheap ones are fine, but you'll find that the that luscious color that you want is um, you have to pay a little bit more for. <laughs> yeah, I saw that right. But it's, you did a beautiful job. <laughs> Very much. Um, I feel like there was another person, Anne. Yeah. This, this is kind of a mess. <laughs> I, I'm drawing on cardboard. Oh, cool. So it was kind of a, uh, a version of the Dickens. Yeah. On um, the little squirrely roundy things from the book cover. Yeah. I wasn't attracted to is the diamonds, you know, the yellow cover. Mm -hmm. But I love that first one. I would have loved to have just copied a little section. Yeah. Which well, is what I started doing, and I felt, oh, no, it needs some of those little wormy things. So, yeah, it's beautiful. Can I see it one more time? I'm sorry. Oh, sure. <laughs> and I haven't figured out which side is up yet. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that can change over the years, even. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, it, so, you definitely are attracted to that, the organic. Um, uh, always, always. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mostly paint lately. So, this was fun to get into something, a dry, media yeah yeah it's very like it's very visceral in a way that painting isn't simply because you have a brush mm -hmm. and you can't you can manipulate it more than that i mean i just have to experiment so this was fun thank you for getting me to get the pastels out and mess with them <laughs> totally thank you for for coming here and being great <laughs> it's nice to meet all you people <laughs> <laughs> thank you everybody Thanks. um so one last chance if there's anyone else. No? Okay. Um, so next time we're doing something really different. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever been into the Stedman Library um, at Central. It's a, it, you have to either take a tour or request to go in there. It's a, um, like a private architectural library um, within the fine arts room. And it has all these uh, old and rare uh, architecture books. And it was donated to the library, you know, years ago. There's a lot to know about it, but um, what I, it's, it's a beautiful room and I'm going to take a, an angle from it, some view from it, and we can use um, just pencils and paper and practice things like perspective and um, drawing with pencil techni techniques, which is not that different than the charcoal we did, but, but there are differences. So um, very different than today, but hopefully um, a learning experience for all, <laughs> including me, because I don't usually work like that, so. So sign up for that one and um, send me any of these that you are pleased with. Um, I'm kind of making a collection of these uh, to hopefully get on the website. And also these are now going on YouTube. So last week's is on the SLPL YouTube page. Um, I didn't watch it because it's painful to watch yourself, but if you um, ever want to review any of anything, they're there. So. 
Thanks so much, everyone. The roofers are here using a leaf blower, so it's good timing for me to go. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Thank you.